Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today we're going to manage this rat's nest of cable and get the controller set up in my dream reef tank looking absolutely mint. Alright, so as you can see, the dream reef tank already has most of the equipment on it and running but I have done absolutely nothing with regard to cable management or setting up the controllers. They are all just dumped in a pile in this corner of the tank. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look that great. And you know, if I have to turn something on or off, it's like lifting one controller up and dealing with a tangle of cables or just unplugging things from the power board. It's a total mess. There is a solution. Uh, and that solution is this. This is the adaptive reef deluxe controller board. I picked this up from aquaexpress.com.au. I'll have that link down below. But what this is, is a waterproof, dedicated, really lightweight, constructed and designed controller board for your aquarium. It comes in a few different sizes and models from their standard model to this one, the deluxe model. And then there's even a full cabinet model as well. But the idea of their standard and their deluxe ones like this is that you can plug them into any existing system. Whether you've got a Red Sea tank or a water box tank or a big custom tank like mine, they come in standard enough sizes that you should be able to plug them in and mount them inside your existing cabinet, or in some cases, depending on your fish room setup, on the wall next to the fish tank. They come with heaps of cutouts, as you can see here, and on the back inside, there's these uh, shelves which you can mount your power boards to and all these rails with holes in them that you can use to cable, die, cable tie down all of the cables and keep everything really neat. On the sides, all sides, the top and the bottom, you've got cutouts everywhere for routing your cables from any which way, direction, up, down, left or right. Now, this is not made of MDF or pine board. It's actually made of expanded PVC which is a, t a type of plastic. What that means is this is actually 100% waterproof. Very important around our saltwater fish tanks. It also means this thing is super lightweight. I mean, I'm just handling this and throwing this around with my fingers. It's great. It also means, being expanded PVC, that you can uh, drill uh, holes in it or um, mount your controllers with screws really, really easily. You don't need to have um, a power drill, a screwdriver is all you need and uh, you know the tiniest amount of elbow grease and you'll be easily able to screw into this material to mount all your controllers. So yeah, your setup for this is Phillips head screws around the front plate. Uh, if you were going to mount this to a wall, you'd remove those screws to remove the front plate and then using the inclu included screws that come in the box, I've got them right here you'd be able to mount this to your wall. The other option for mounting is to use this piece, which comes with the deluxe model, and this is called a French cleat. Essentially, you screw this into your wall, and this is permanently attached to the wall, and then the whole unit um, is able to sit on top of it like that, so you can lift it on and off this French cleat. Um, and that means that if you need to access the things that are inside this cabinet or the, uh, the adaptive reef controller board, you can mount it, lift it off the wall and then put it back on the wall and it's really secure. Now for me, for me, I won't be mounting it to the wall or using the French cleat. I'm gonna actually have it freestanding inside my cabinet um, against the back. And it works really well like that as well because as you can see, it just stands upright really easily. If I had a different shaped cabinet, maybe I'd put it horizontally as well and it stands upright horizontally just as easily. Uh, so what is the purpose of this product? I, I know plenty of people out there have built their own controller boards and you can do it out of MDF or pine board or anything similar to that. Obviously, you have to make sure you keep those products dry and away from water as they will expand if they're uh, exposed to water. But you know, it's a cheap and easy thing to do. I say easy if you're skilled with some form of woodworking or you have the appropriate tools. To make something like this yourself, you'd probably need a jigsaw uh, or a, some type of wood routing uh, machinery to be able to properly make one of these. Also, the time investment in designing something, where the cutouts are gonna go, 
uh, how big you need it, the dimensions. Um, if you want it to be three-dimensional like this one and have a structure on the inside for holding all your power boards and bricks and cables, that's extra pieces, extra work. It would be a big, I would say, a fairly large hobby project if that's something you wanted to undertake. And if you do want to undertake that, fantastic. However, that's definitely not for everyone. A lot of people just want a plug and play solution that they can put in there and mount their controllers to. And that is exactly where this sits in the market. And, and they've done a fantastic job designing this to be exactly what it needs to be. It also comes with a whole bunch of these, which are, uh, I think they're called grommets or the cable cutouts. So basically, once you mount your controllers onto this and um, you've routed all the cables through these holes, many of the holes will be maybe unused or some of them might only have one or two cables going through them. So you wanna make it look a bit cleaner. You grab one of these appropriate size for whichever hole you're looking at and you just um, clip them in place like that. And as you can see, it fills the hole and makes the cutout for the cable smaller and more discreet. There's an abundance of these that come with it for all of the different cutouts. Uh, so even if you're not using certain cutouts, there are ones that uh, don't include the cable cutout and completely cover the hole. They're all um, countersunk and really nice and they're made out of that same PVC material. So uh, yeah, the whole thing's lightweight and waterproof. It comes in black and white, so you can choose whichever color suits your setup the best. Anyway, I think that's all there is to say about the product. Let's put it in use. So. I'm gonna go into time-lapse mode and you're gonna see me tearing apart all of these cables and power bricks and controllers, putting this guy in the cabinet, mounting the controllers to it, and uh, hopefully having a really nice, tidy, cable-managed setup on my dream reef tank. So uh, let's get to it. It's so much cleaner. All the power boards are hidden behind the adaptive reef controller board. Uh, all the power plugs are just plugged in nicely on my two power strips there. All the controllers are easily accessible, mounted, you know, perfectly straight with their own specific spots. There's plenty of room for more controllers, which there certainly will be. Uh, off the top of my head, I've still got um, my uh, Auto Aqua Auto Water Change controller that's still being used on the old tank. My uh, Pacific Sun Calc Feeder Pro uh, dosing controller for the calcium reactor. That's also still running on my old tank. Um, possibly another max spec controller if I run more gyres as well. Um, yeah, who knows what else and what other controllers I'll end up mounting, but there's plenty of room for more, as you can see. Uh, it's so much cleaner and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that solution. There's also a heap of room in front of the controller board there in the cabinet, and that's probably where I'm gonna be putting my calcium reactor and CO2 bottle. Um, or maybe my dosing vessels and I'll put the calcium reactor on the other side. We'll see when I come to set it up, but uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, it's a really nice product. As you can see, I've put in all the, um, uh, the grommets or the, the hole covers, either the full plate ones or the ones with the cable cut out where I've routed in cables. So that really finishes it off. It's a nice touch. And yeah, in there, it's just completely freestanding, but of course you could wall mount it using either the, uh, the French cleat mount or just directly onto the wall. Overall, I can think of maybe two flaws with the product in general. Um, the first is that the, the manual that comes with it is pretty sparse. Not that it really needs much of a manual, but it, it did uh, cause me a couple of question marks to just figure out exactly what it was saying and um, uh, it's mostly to do with the wall mounting instructions anyway, which I didn't need, but um, yeah, I think anyone could probably figure it out, so it's not too much of a flaw. 
Um, uh, the other one, and this may just be my unit, but the, uh, the grommets for the larger cutout holes, they were really tight to get in there. It required um, quite a few tries to get the angle exactly right. It's got to go in perfectly straight. If you go in the top, then the bottom, it won't go in properly. Um, required a pretty good push to get it in. But again, pretty minor, and that might just be unique to my unit. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in one of these adaptive reef controller boards, either the, um, the regular one, the deluxe one, or the full cabinet one. Uh, they come in black or white, and you can get them from aquaexpress.com.au. They're really quite affordable. Uh, certainly for me, that they're made out of expanded PVC and fully waterproof, and that it's just a plug and play solution uh, at quite a reasonable price is what sold it on me over perhaps trying to build one DIY. I mean, a jigsaw alone to be able to cut out particle board and then not to mention the skill to be able to do it to this level of quality uh, is, is in my opinion worth far more than the cost of the product. So uh, yeah, that's why I, I went with the, um, the pre-made solution here and uh, I'm, I'm very happy that I did. Um, I'll have links down below to all the products if you're interested in them. Uh, let me know down below if, if you've used a similar product like this or if you've ever built your own or how you're currently handling um, your cable management on your reef tank, uh, if it is in fact managed. I know it's something I never did on my old tank. It was always just spaghetti behind the tank, but uh, you know, this is my dream reef tank build, so I wanna try and do things right uh, on this particular tank. Uh, if you like this video, get subscribed, leave a like, leave a comment down below. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.